Hey Key Hive, welcome back to my channel. So today I got another great video for you all because it is the first day of my graduate school series. So if you found your way to this video, congratulations on either applying to grad school or thinking about applying to grad school because you have just made one of the best decisions of your life. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button to become a part of the Key Hive and to stay updated on the rest of the series this week because you don't want to miss anything I'm doing this week. All right, so let's get right into the video. Okay, so today I am talking about the differences between undergrad and graduate school because I wish somebody would have told me what the differences were before I jumped right into graduate school. If I would have known, I would have been better prepared. So I'm going to help prepare you for what to expect. So I have 10 tips that are going to help you get ready for this next phase of your life. So let's get right into it. All right, so the first difference that I noticed when I went to graduate school was that the class size was a lot smaller than undergrad. So undergrad, you're used to having about three, 200 people in a class. You can, you know, not go to class and the teacher wouldn't even know that you're not there. Well, in graduate school, that's, that's not the case. So usually you have a cohort and a cohort is just a group of people that you go through a program with. And it usually ranges from about 20 to 30 people. My cohort was kind of big. It started off as 40 people and then it probably trailed off to about 35-ish people by the time we all graduated. So with that being said, when the class size is smaller and if you miss a class, everybody's gonna know that you weren't there because your seat is empty. Usually everybody in my cohort, we sat in the same seat and if somebody sat in your seat, moved their stuff and got it out, and got it out the way. <laughs> professors know you by name. I called my professors by their first name, which made it more personal level. Also, you're kind of in a way forced to participate because one, it's usually a part of your grade. Two, if you don't participate, teachers usually notice that you don't. Now, I didn't participate verbally a lot because I was doing a lot of thinking because all the information, it was just, it was just so much information in my brain and I wasn't ready for all that information. So, Participation is a part of the whole smaller class size because you can't get away with not saying anything, which leads me to tip number two. Tip number two is there's so much reading in graduate school. Like it's, it was a lot. I remember when I first started in the first couple of weeks, you know, I had my little list of all the readings I had to do for the entire semester. I had all my books and you know, I was gonna sit down and read everything. And I remember one time I did read everything I needed for class and took notes and everything. Y'all, it took me 10 and a half hours to read everything, breaks included. And I was like, I will never do that again. Out of reading, but the best way to read is just to kind of skim the material. If there's anything you don't know or you don't understand, just highlight it and put a sticky note by it and just kind of ask questions in class because it'll help you, you know, absorb everything you're trying to learn because Graduate school is the field you're trying to go into, so it's more important than undergrad because you're not taking all these random classes, all these classes you need to help you know develop yourself in the career path you're trying to take. Quick story, so I remember the first night right before class started, I had to read some chapters for class. So I sat down at my desk, opened the book. I had to read this book called Completing Distinctions and it just sounds hard. Open it up to the first page of the chapter, right? And I read the first, you know, three lines. This is exactly what I did. So we're gonna do like a mini flashback black and white thing. Any act of knowing, any knowing act, begins with the drawing of a distinction with the knowing of a difference. The ecosystem species paragraphs in its family child, or when another part of a whole is simply differentiated from another part. I read that and I was like, Oh no, closed it and turned off Netflix. If you don't understand something, just take a note of it and uh, ask about it in class. Speaking of class, tip number three, class times are usually longer. So I didn't know this, because when I was undergrad, I took classes that were about 50 minutes, three times a week, or an hour and 15 minutes, twice a week. 
Well, in graduate school, classes are usually three hours long. And in the summertime, they're about five hours long. Yeah. Yeah, first long, my classes started from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. But the good thing about that is you only have class one time a week. Since classes are longer, make sure you bring some snacks. I brought lunch, five snacks, water, juice, protein shakes, a blanket, change of clothes. If you're sitting in class that long, you have to have those stamina has to be really, really good because there were times I was sitting in class and I was sitting right where the clock was so I could look at the clock and I'd be like, mm. We got about two hours left and my brain has shut off. But sometimes you just have to breathe in, breathe out, shake your head, stand up, turn around, do the hokey pokey, kind of get yourself back into, into the game so you can finish the last two hours of class. Number four is since you have a cohort, you take classes with the same people over the course of your program. So there's no, oh, what class you got this time? What class you got? What time your class start? There's none of that. So you don't have to worry about classes getting filled up super fast because you're taking classes with the same people, which helps you to develop relationships with them. I've met some of my best friends in graduate school and I still talk to them to this day. I probably will talk to them for the rest of my life because they are my favorite people. So you take them with the same people so you kind of can talk about your struggles with the classes. They can help you out if they understand something that you don't. You can share notes. If you miss class one day, you can kind of have them run down what you were, which I went over in the class so you don't miss anything. And I think it just helps out a lot. Just so your cohort turns into your family over time and it's just great. So having class the same people, you usually hang out with them all the time. It's kind of develop that relationship with them, which I love. Number five may come as a shock to some, but there's usually no multiple choice test in graduate school essays or a short answer which means which goes back to tip number um two which is so much reading make sure you at least try to read something if you don't understand it just try to skim through it and mark where you don't understand because tests are going to demonstrate how you understand the information not not to you know memorize something and then regurgitate it because that's not what grad school is you have to take information you get from the professor or the book, marinate it in your mind, and then try to put it in your own words onto the test. And if you sit there and try to say exactly from the book, you're gonna get it wrong. So don't do that. You really have to understand what's going on or you're gonna be lost and you're gonna fail the test. And you definitely can't fail in grad school because you get deficiency points. So if you make more than three C's, you get kicked out of your program. The deficiency point they send a letter to your house you know, telling you what you can do what happens if you get too many so don't get any c's in graduate school number six is group projects are still a thing oh you're like dang i thought you know once i got out of undergrad group projects gonna be over ha no they're very alive and well in grad school i can tell you that now more difficult in grad school because you have to match up people's schedules and then you have a different you have a wide array of people who like are single they're married they got kids so you have to match up people's schedules and everything and then you know you always have a group project and there's always one person who just doesn't want to do it or whoever the person wants to take over the project and then it just mess it up and then you see your project in, in class or you meet with the teacher you're just like hmm why'd you why'd you do that to the project and you didn't even consult the rest of the group members <sighs> anyways that was a flashback sorry if you thought they were over because they're not number seven is papers there are so many papers in grad school all right y'all so this right here is every paper that i wrote in graduate school most of my papers were about 10 to 20 pages long yes i had never written a paper that long in my life until I got to graduate school and I cannot tell you how many times I slammed my computer down, threw it off, and watched Netflix for four hours before I even finished the paper. I did that so many times in grad school it wasn't even funny. Get prepared to really 
write a lot and get your work critiqued like I don't know what if you're more, if you weren't like an English major or you didn't write a lot of papers in undergrad because I didn't write too many papers in undergrad I wrote like five or six but in graduate school there was a paper like every week and for every class like it was just or the paper would be the final exam and the paper would be like 20 25 pages long. just research some graduate school writing I'm not gonna give you any writing tips because I wasn't the best writer but I did make it out of graduate school so I guess you know it was good enough like graduate school writing tips or how to write on a graduate school level um, I didn't really get to that point probably until my second semester of the, my first year of the program so you're definitely gonna need some writing tips your paper I ever wrote is right here and I keep my papers because I never know when I need to like reference them again or if I want to go to get my PhD I might need to you know peruse through this to see if I want to send them a writing sample but just get prepared to write write a lot a lot of long nights headaches researching articles and books and calling your mom and telling them you don't want to be at school anymore and praying to the Lord that you make it through the through the semester and telling your friends that you don't know if this is for you and crying tears all of that all of that's a thing so number eight is graduate school brings on a different type of stress like in undergrad there was stress but you could kind of procrastinate sometimes depending on your major you can you could procrastinate a little bit and then you know do it you know do your stuff and get an A or you could study for a test at the last minute and memorize all the information and then throw it on the throw on the test like I said earlier you can't do that because you know you got it's a different type of thing like graduate school is a new thing and I have one thing especially with my program because I did undergrad in psych and then I went and in straight into my grad program for marriage and family therapy and one thing that I noticed is that undergrad did not prepare me for grad school at all. Like I don't even know what the point of undergrad was if in graduate school everything I learned in undergrad was like for nothing. I, I didn't use anything for undergrad. Probably like one thing but every like the way I think has changed because of my graduate school program. So now I'm just like you meant to tell me I took all I took out all the student loans. I spent five years of undergrad for me to get transformed in three months of grad school and to not have to use anything like they taking your money they taking your money and it's just a lot and you're just freaking out freaking out trust me i know what you're probably feeling because i felt the same way especially since i moved away from home for graduate school it was just a lot of new changes that happened that I wasn't prepared for but I got through it so if I got through it you can too. Number nine preparation is necessary you have to prepare yourself because I didn't prepare myself I didn't really know what to expect but I didn't know going into the program I was gonna have to do 59 papers 5,000 hours of reading and tears every other day just because of all the stuff that I had to do. I didn't know that but now that I do I can help you all thinking about going to grad school or major family therapy and just prepare you for for the road ahead. It's definitely a tough road. I'm not gonna lie I'm not gonna share code and be like oh grad school is nothing. No grad school is gonna kick your butt. It's gonna kick your butt. You are just gonna be you're gonna be a whole different person but it's gonna be so worth it and 10 you will survive the best way I could tell you that you're gonna survive is to get you a nice support system find some people in your cohort that you really click with and you hang out outside of class y'all could talk about classes or the teachers or what you don't like or what you do like or go on random road trips I did that a lot enjoy it enjoy graduate school I finished my program in two years and I actually didn't mind on campus. I do recommend that if you are young, if you are single, you have no kids, you're financially able to, or you have a support system at home that can help support you while you go to school. I really recommend going to the school to this education because I've done online courses and they're okay, but it's nothing like getting that interaction in person 
and getting that knowledge in person because I'm a visual learner so I need to see stuff happening in order for me to get it. So I do recommend going to the school. All right, so those are my 10 tips I have for you. I know this video was pretty long, but again, I have a lot of information to share with you all. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to stay tuned for the rest of the videos this week. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.